Welcome to worship at South Point Christian Church, where we welcome all, feed the soul, and serve with joy. Whether this is your first time worshiping with us or you've been with us since the beginning of our journey almost 20 years ago, we are glad you are here today. In a few moments, we'll begin worship where we'll include a time for communion. So if you need to go gather some bread or juice, now is the time to do that. But right now, let me share just a few brief announcements to help you live out your faith this week. Join together for a festive and fun evening, December 13th, for our not-so-silent night as we share carols and stories and celebrate the Christmas season. Imagine a new world this Advent with our devotional that you can pick up at South Point and RSVP online to join with disciples from across Nebraska Wednesday mornings to share what this new world in Christ might bring. Get ready to volunteer at our FoodNet site starting in December so you can serve your neighbors with joy. Learn more about our church and financially support our congregation online at southpointcc.org. But now, let us join our hearts as we begin our time of worship.
Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent and we light the candle of hope. Advent is a time of anticipation when we remember how the expectant hope of the world was fulfilled with the coming of Jesus and how we lay claim to the hope that we have in Christ every day. In a world too often filled with intensity and uncertainty and anxiety, we rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. May the light of his candle remind us of God's enduring faithfulness. Our hope is in you, Lord. Light our path and help us, God. See the new world you are creating us around, in us and through us. Amen. Have you ever felt like you were in the dark? That you are cold and lonely and hoping that soon there would be warm light and something that would make you feel loved and hopeful and full of peace? Advent is a season that brings us out of darkness. It's a time of waiting. And this week, it's a time that we get to reflect on the hope that Christ will bring. As we wait for Christmas the next four weeks, I invite you to enter into God's light, to think about the light that God has placed inside your heart. To think about the light that God has placed inside your heart. I want you this week to think about one thing that God has blessed you with. What is one gift that he's given you that you can share with the world? Maybe it's a smile or a kind word. Maybe it's including someone at the lunch table who often looks lonely. Maybe it's a song. I invite you this week to join with me in singing as we think about the light that Christ brings into the darkness. Let's sing one verse of this little light of mine. Ready? One, two, three, four, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I invite you to share your light in the darkness this week as we enter into Advent. Welcome to Advent. As we begin this season of preparing our hearts for the good news of Jesus' birth and the new world that God is imagining through him and through all of us who would follow Jesus, it is a joyous season and also a season that calls for us to unite our hearts in prayer. So would you join me? Lord, in a week where we have been giving thanks. Help us continue giving thanks for the ways in which you make your love a reality among us, the ways in which you have moved heaven and earth a little closer through Jesus so that we can discover what your grace and love and hope and peace and joy look like and feel like and sound like that these that these things may not just be feelings or ideas, but they may be the guideposts to our life. God, help us welcome this spirit and this season into our households, into this world, so that we may be transformed by the good news of Jesus. Guide us, God as we join our hearts to pray the prayers that have been shared by this community and to 
call out to you in hope those prayers that remain in our own hearts. So let us continue in prayer by lifting our voices and saying the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right those who remember you in your ways but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself we transgressed we have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth we all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away there is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. Welcome to Advent, a season where we celebrate all that God has done, is doing, and will continue to do to make God's love real in our hearts and in this world. It's a time where we learn to see the world through God's eyes, to dream God's dreams, and to proclaim that through Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel, that we can imagine a new world founded on hope, peace, joy, and love. And to guide us in this season, at least for the first three weeks, we have the words of 8th century BCE Hebrew prophet Isaiah. Now Isaiah, even though he's from thousands of years ago, he is a prophet for our times. See, his people we're in the middle of a turbulent season full of warfare and disease, of chaos and strife. And through it all, he asked the questions, where is God in this? What can we learn and what does it mean to follow God? What hopes can we have in God? These are the same questions many of us have been asking in 2020. So. 
I am looking forward to journeying with you in this Advent season. I think probably the first stop on this journey that we have to recognize in this Advent is to remember that we need God, that we do not have all of the answers, that everything is not okay. You know, that, that, that we have made some messes in this world of poverty and violence, division and, and greed, racism, sexism, homophobia, the very destruction of the earth itself that we were called to be stewards of. These are ways in which we humans have mucked it up big time. And we need those words of Isaiah, come down, God, tear open the heavens, give us a new way. You know, we would like to think in 2020 that we can blame most of our problems on the coronavirus. But the coronavirus didn't create racism and sexism and greed. It's just revealed what has been there all along. It has uncovered those sicknesses that happen when we think we are the only ones in charge. You know, the Greek word for reveal is apocalypto, where we get apocalypse. So today is kind of like our apocalypse Sunday, apocalypse now. And Isaiah is calling for us to reach out to God in this season of revealing in hopes that we see that we need God's help. We can't do it alone. Isaiah knows that when God acts in our world, it will disrupt the status quo. It will disrupt the powers that be. We might be inconvenienced when things shift. We have to find a new way of being. But that even in those hard transitions, God is working for good in it all. Change doesn't always happen like we expect, but that's nothing new. Even Isaiah uses images from the past when he calls on God to intercede in the future. Isaiah says, remember God, remember when, when you just rocked the earth. Remember when you destroyed the entire Egyptian empire and liberated us? Do you remember when you rained down bread and fed us and water to spring up from the desert? Do you remember when you made our enemies' walls in Jericho crumble down? What are you going to do next, God? How are you going to move? Help us see you, God. Where are you now? I think 2020 has been a year of where are you now, God? And a lot of hope and a lot of prayer. You know, that's why I'm so grateful that those of you who are joining us in our devotional studies, and I hope that you'll join in those, either on your own or in our Zoom discussions each week. But I think our author of these devotionals, our general minister and president, Reverend Terry Horde Owens, she hits the urgency, she hits the nail on the head when she writes about today's text that Isaiah speaks to a God on behalf of a people who have run out of time, a people who need God to show up now. Like Isaiah, many communities today constantly live on the edge of enough marginalized and living with constant and multiple traumas of poverty and oppression. She says, if you have life-changing problems, you need solutions today. And if you are in a burning building, you need firefighters to break through the walls, to shatter windows, to knock down doors. There are times when we simply need God to move now. Now, many of us have been joking we're not so joking about this year being a dumpster fire. And we have known way too much literal fire and the needs of firefighters this year. But I think Pastor Terry's words really come to life when she talks about in a burning building, you need firefighters who are going to break through those walls, who are going to shatter the windows and knock down doors. You know, I was talking with Sherry Ruff who graciously offered to read this scripture today. She was giving me updates on her husband, Ron, who's at inpatient physical rehabilitation after falling and bruising his hip a few weeks ago. Sherry told me how much she not only misses him, but how much their dog, Dora, misses him. 
For example, the Colgan man was there to refill their water softener while Sherry was on the speakerphone with Ron and Dora started barking and yapping and, oh, you know, she was a good dog, ready to protect her mama. But all of a sudden, Dora heard over the speakerphone a familiar voice as Ron said, no barking, Dora. And she stopped, she looked around, and as soon as she stopped barking, Ron said again over the speakerphone, good dog, Dora. And Sherry said Dora's tail just started wagging. She didn't need to see Ron. She didn't need to see her master, but she was able to recognize her master's voice. Even if he wasn't right there, she could still be guided and follow in ways that were pleasing and life-giving to everyone. We need to learn this lesson from Dora, and that's a part of what Isaiah is trying to do. Isaiah is trying to be our Dora, to call us to hope and to see and to feel the presence of our master. But Isaiah acknowledges that in seasons of chaos, it can feel at times like God is hidden. That was certainly the case for Isaiah's people. They felt like they were lost from God, and they were definitely wandering in that absence. Maybe that feeling, though, of wanting God to act and to fix things and not seeing it happen right away is less of God forgetting us, and it's more about we who have forgotten God, that we've forgotten God's dreams, that we've forgotten and put our trust in God's new world. That is why Advent is so important. Because it's not just preparing for a special Christmas day. It's not just preparing trees or lights or meals. We are preparing for a new world. A world where God's presence that makes way for justice and righteousness, for peace and for love, that it becomes abundantly clear. Clear in our hearts, in our families, in our governance, in our economy, in how we treat our neighbors and how we treat this very earth. Yes, things are not okay, okay? We are a hot mess. But we can have hope in God to show up and to make that new world now. We just have to look for it. We have to listen and tune our hearts and our ears and our lives for it. Maybe this year that Advent truth can sink into the very marrow of our bones. Maybe this year Isaiah's words and Christ's teachings can take root in our systems and our structures that guide our communities. Let us hold on to that hope in God who tears open the heavens, who finds new ways to bring that kingdom of heaven down to earth. And that God who is waiting for you and I to respond. Amen. Jesus, let your kingdom come here. Let your will be done.
in Christ, and no matter who we are, where we have been, or what is going on in the world around us, at this table, Jesus' love unites us as one. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. Jesus Emmanuel, God is with us. And because of this promise, we are given the hope, peace, joy, and love to imagine a new world built on Christ's message. The hope, peace, joy, and love. The hope, peace, joy, and love. The hope, peace, joy, and love to imagine a new world built on Christ's message. Each time we receive the gift of communion, we are saying yes to God. We are saying yes. We are saying yes. We are saying yes to God's new creation. So taste and see a new world where, like this bread, we are blessed, broken, and given. Like this bread, we are blessed, broken, and given in love. Let this cup inspire you to trust in God's overflowing love through Christ. As we remember that on that night, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, the bread of life. And after dinner, Jesus took a cup and he gave it thanks and praise. And he encouraged them by saying, drink from this cup, all of you, for this is my love poured out for the world, the cup of love. Don't forget this meal. Don't forget this meal. Don't forget this meal. Don't forget this gift. Don't forget this gift. Don't forget this gift. Let your soul and heart be nourished by this truth. God is making a new world grounded in love and justice. And it begins as we can imagine and trust that we are beloved. We are beloved. We are beloved that we are capable and that the light of Christ is here. The light of Christ is here. The light of the Christ is here. The light of Christ is here. Amen. 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 So go now living with that Advent hope that we know a God who is willing to come down and to be with us. Go to love and to serve your God by loving and serving your neighbor. Amen. Amen.